Greetings all. This is going to be a preview of eighth grade math for the week of September 26th to September 30th. So first things first, um, we are going to have a shorter week of content this week because there's staff development and there's also a flex date on Friday. But we are still continuing solving equations and writing equations with variables on both sides involving real world problems. So last week, Ryan took the charge on breaking down some information about writing equations with variables on both sides and solving them. So this is pretty much the same. So please go back and refresh your memory on that video as well. The two teeths that we're gonna be focusing on are 8.8.8C and an 8.8A. Say that three times fast. Um, model and solve one variable equations with variables on both sides of the equal sign that represent mathematical and real world problems using rational number coefficients and constants. And then 8.8a is writing one variable equations or inequalities with variables on both sides that represents problems using rational numbers and coefficients. So one of them is modeling and solving and the other one is writing. The TEK 8.8c has been tested about twice every year on the STAR test. There's 10 questions in the past five years. And 8.8a is a supporting standard. It's been tested about or tested once a year, so five times in five years. So Monday, Tuesday, staff development day. On Thursday, let's just look at um, what the lesson entails for that one. And um, I'm gonna go backwards than what I've done on the other videos. I'm actually gonna start with what possibly built. So again, the two takes are there. The goal for today, for this day, is going to have students write equations from words and then solve it. So some of the prior knowledge is that students did two-step equations with variables on one side in seventh grade, and they wrote uh, two-step inequalities as well. The new concept is that there's going to be a variable on both sides. So there's a few misconceptions um, that students may have, and a few of these involve inequalities, which will be covered the following week, not right now. But um, I'll go over those on the lead forward guide. I want to show you the notes and the practice. So notes here are going to be where students are actually writing the, and setting up equations. So there's different ways students can be tested on this TEK. Sometimes there's some geometric concepts that are involved in there. As you can see with example number two, they're asking about the perimeter. With If um, the perimeter of the square is 2x plus 54, then what's the value of x? Um, over here, students are needing to read word problems, uh, read it from a table, and be able to write an equation, okay? This document is our going to be our star released questions. However, some of the 2022 questions aren't on there, so I had to go digging for those, but I do want to show you those. So for equations and inequalities in the past, and I'm going to look at both 8.8a and c together. So 8.8a is the one where students were needing to actually write equations. And then 8.8c was where they were needing to model and solve. So let's look at A. So A says the perimeter of the triangle is shown, uh, triangle shown is 17 units. The dimensions of the triangle are given in units. So we have our units here, um, and they're saying that the total perimeter there is 17. 17x, I'm sorry. So how do we find the perimeter? We add up all the sides. If you look at the answer choices and try to start eliminating, all of these are equal to 17, okay? So there's not much we can do there. Um, but then if you look here and we add up all the sides, we know that 15 plus 15 plus 7x is going to be equal to our perimeter here. So looking at the answer choices, 17x equals 30 plus 17x, I'm sorry, plus 7x. That is equivalent because they've combined this 15 and this 15, so that's a possibility, but let's look at the other ones. 17x, that's our perimeter, um, is equal to 15, that's, we have a 15, and then 22x. How did they possibly get 22? By adding 15 and 7x. So B is not correct because we can't combine 15 and 7x. And then if we continue here, C has a 7 and then 30x. And so they ended up switching the variable to the incorrect variable term. So C would not be correct 
And then D is very similar to B, except not only did they switch the variable term, but they went ahead and combined the 15 and the seven again, which we cannot do because they are unlike terms. So A was the correct answer for that one. So this one, they just had to write an equation. And I wanna show you what it looks, what it has looked like in the past. Those were both inequalities, so I'll skip past those, but this is an equation where they give them a word problem and students are needing to write an equation. Um, same thing, word problem, need to write an equation. 8.8C is where they are actually solving, writing, solving, they're modeling. So let's look, take a look at this star release question from 2022 for 8.8C. So two customers spent the same total amount of money at a restaurant. The first customer bought eight wings and left a $4 tip. The second customer bought 10 wings and left a $2.80 tip. Both customers paid the same amount per wing. How much does one hot wing cost at this restaurant in dollars and cents? Record your answer in the boxes below. So first things first, just kind of visualizing this problem. What do we know? So we know that there's how many customers? There's two. So there's a first customer and then there's a second customer. The amount uh, that they spent at the restaurant was the same. So how much the first customer spent and the second customer spent was the same. So I'm gonna make those two equal. So let's talk about the first customer. They bought eight hot wings. So I would do eight W for wings and they left a $4 tip that is added to how much they paid, right? Eight wings and then in addition, they have to add the four to the tip and then 10 W for the 10 wings for the second customer and then a $2 and 80 cent tip. From here, we would have our students go into Desmos and plug this in. I'm gonna continue working this out by hand, um, but they can plug this into Desmos to check their answer and back up their work. I'm gonna continue going. So we want to isolate our variables. So we want to get our Ws together. We wanna to figure out how much one wing is going to be. I'm gonna draw a line down the equal sign, and I'm gonna go ahead and start moving some of these constants. I'm gonna move this 280 to the other side, to 280 from here. And where do I need to put the 280 on the other side? With the other constant term. I can't subtract 280 from 8W. Those terms are not alike. So minus 280. This here is zero. So as I simplify and bring everything down, 8W plus, that's gonna be $1.20, so 1.2 is equal to 10W. I'm kind of running out of room here, but I'm gonna keep going. So then we are now needing to get our variable terms on the same side. I'm gonna move this 8W by the 10W. You can also move the 10W to the other side. So 8W equals, I'm sorry, I'm gonna move this as positive, so I'm gonna make it negative over here and simplify everything. And I'm just gonna kind of swoop it over here just because I'm running out of room. So 1.2 is equal to 2w. Go through, divide this by two and this by two, w is equal to 0 0.6 or 60 cents. For students to check their answer in Desmos, they're gonna type in the left side, then they're gonna type in the right side and see where the two intersect. Look at the x value and that is going to be 0 0.6 or 60, positive. So that is 8.8C, 8.8A, writing the equation, 8.8C is modeling and solving the equations. And I'm gonna show you some more of what those looked like uh, from star other star released items. All right, here we are, 8.8C. So again, not only are they giving them a verbal description, but students are going to need to go through, set up the equation, solve the equation, and figure out what the correct answer is here. And here's another one where they just basically give them the equation and they have to solve it. Another one where they have to go through and write the equation and solve it. So that's pretty straightforward with that. Let me go back. So I showed you what was in Edgephoria for Thursday where they were setting up the equations and solving them. And then for the next day, students are just gonna have, students are gonna have a little bit more practice this day so there's two like examples that you definitely should model students and walk them through the process here 
One of them is involving some geometric concepts and the other one is writing an equation. Both of them are writing an equation. Um, but so this is the day where students are going to practice their 2.0 um, skills. So this is a, a, a so you're gonna assign this in Edgephoria and students are gonna practice all STAR 2.0 problems uh, based on uh, the teeth that are listed here, A point A, B um, and C. So go ahead and, and there's a few more ticks in here and assign this to your students. Make sure they're showing some work on a separate sheet of paper because this is an online activity. Um, and take the, a look at that data because in the curriculum, and I'm gonna switch screens here. So Thursday they were continuing writing and solving those equations on Friday. They're gonna practice a little bit. But if you can look for the next week, there's gonna be another flex day. That's a perfect, perfect opportunity to go ahead and see how your students did on that assessment, what um, interventions you may need to have with students, what reteach you may need to have with students, and then your district checkpoint is going to be on the following days. And after that, we are going to step into inequalities. This week, we're pretty much just summing up what students need to know in order to solve equations. So model, solve, and write equations. And then after that, we'll go into inequalities. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and taking time out of your day to do such. Here is a link for you guys to leave some feedback. Please leave feedback. There's also a QR code if that's easier for you. There's gonna be some office hours on the 20th from 4 to 4.30. Please join um, if you have any questions and let me know what you guys think of these videos, if they're helpful on the feedback survey, and if there's anything else that we can do to help uh, move things along in your classrooms. And I look forward to seeing what's going on in the classrooms with you guys and seeing all the great things that you're doing. With